Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Well, this is Emma Newman. This video is for my own students, but I thought it would benefit for anyone else. So, do you remember how many times technically not so perfect performance would make a wow impression on us? And how many times technically perfect performance would sound extremely boring and too complicated to feel anything at all? That happens because piano playing is just another way of expressing energy. Just like you would feel the energy of the person you are talking to. This energy would give us information about who this person is, what his real intentions are. And just like in conversation where we get um, all mental impression of the person mostly from his energy and intonation and very little from what he's actually saying, in piano playing, we receive the energy of the performer first, and only then we perceive the notes that he is playing. And you can experiment yourself and listen to any pianist without sound. And um, you will notice how much easier it is to read, to feel his energy. Anyways, just like in conversation, uh, you would get the energy of a person in between words, you get the energy of the performer in between notes. So today I'm going to share with you an exercise that will help you to find your own voice, to change your energy and that will bring profound contentment to you about your playing. I'm going to explain everything in details just in a minute, but first I would like to start with a simple comparison of how does it feel to play with and without your voice. So when you play with your voice, it feels like you simply speak with your own voice through intonation. You simply know what to say through phrasing, image, form, time, artistry, and you know how to say through sound imagination. And all of this makes your energy be very clear and calmly focused. And that makes it um, very easier for you to express everything you want to say while playing. Now, on contrary, when you are not playing with your voice, it feels like you're mostly expressing some tense and um, very uncomfortable energy full of negative thoughts, like, I'm so afraid, I'm not gonna play well enough. I'm so gonna try my best. I so wish my teacher would like my playing, my audience would like my performance. So, <laughs> um, that makes your energy be very distorted, um, very unsure and not focused at all. And that makes it very, very hard for you to express everything you wanna say. Um, it feels mostly like you're trying to uh, trying hard to push through that blurry and thick energy around you. And uh, if to make the analogy with a speech, the closest one would be, it's like when you're trying to speak, when there is a hand over your mouth. Sounds familiar, right? And by the way, the voice is directly connected to our play, because energy is voice, voice is intonation, how we sing, and intonation is play. So when uh, we, for example, not feeling well, or we are under the stress, or we are worried and we are full of nervousness, so uh, our voice would become weak, tense, and very, very tiny. And so do our intonation and playing. It will become very rigid and frozen. And uh, if you can recall, when you go on the stage and you start playing it, at least in the first minutes, you always feel that um, your hands and everything in your mind kind of uh, is very rigid and kind of separated and detached. Nothing is flowing. Um, it's not because you're not ready or something wrong with you. I, I, I promise you, if you just stay on the stage and you simply say something to, the, to your audience, your voice will sound the same way, very tense um, and very rigid. You will be like, oh, hello something like this. 
So our voice is directly connected to our playing and if you want to improve your playing, improve your voice. <laughs> so basically finding your own voice is mostly about how to upgrade your intonation, how to upgrade your voice. So I'm gonna try, I guess, <laughs> to get um, back to my memories and try to show you the difference. I mean, you already heard how, how does it feel like to play with your voice. Now let me try to show you how does it feel to play without your voice. Well, it's kind of easy, I think. So I'm gonna do absolutely the same um, phrasing and form and everything. But um, completely forgetting my voice. Um, I'm like asking with my with my energy. I wish it is well enough. I wish everyone likes my playing. I still want to play nicely. <laughs> Something like this. But um, I'm gonna check it on the camera right now. But I think uh, you could feel the difference. So why does it happen that other pianists play more freely than you? Forget about other pianists, why when the professor plays more confident, more free with his own voice, and yet your voice would be still small, frozen and fearful, like again it's covered with invisible veil of someone else's energy, someone else's voice. I would say that having our own voice is the essence of piano playing from day one. That's the reason why we want to play piano, we want to express ourselves. And this is so sad that uh, we were convinced that to find our free voice and style of playing, we need to practice more, study more, experience more, be grown up enough, <laughs> being genius enough. So uh, time goes. Uh, we practice more, we study more, we are very good students. We believe we've grown up enough now, <laughs> but still we're unsure about our play. So apparently that's not the case. Uh, because ability to play technically free and to learn many masterpieces with all your beautiful professors will not let you free yourself. Especially if you are aiming for a professional education and you are spending much time in conservatories or universities with your professors. The pressure of authority is so incredibly tense that somehow, almost always, it manages to break your voice down, to break your personality, making from you another zombie student, uh, fearfully uh, and blindly following everything and everyone. Of course, there are exceptions, there are cases where professors are truly great teachers, but in this case um, they would need to have a great deal of knowledge, authentic desire to help, and hearts full of love and kindness. And in high education, <laughs> that's an exception. So the pressure of education um, brings your voice deeper and deeper down to your subconscious, leaving you with a feeling that Something is still missing, something is not right, something is not enough, and you want something more. And that's true, of course you want something more, because there is something more, and you feel it intuitively. And 
it hurts very badly when this um, profound knowing that your voice is missing finally shows up uh, in a way of panic before upcoming performance and uh, when you're scared and down this is where you start questioning yourself do i really want to play piano am i really supposed to be on the stage why do i want to play piano <laughs> maybe just because i started a long time ago and i can't stop now because that's simply not an option Your own voice is your inner world, it's the core of your being. And you can reach this stage through deep meditation where you're no longer guided by your mind but by your intuition only. And that's the place for your creativity and improvisation where you intuitively feel every next step in the music and the moment. That's a place where you finally let go of all the programmed appropriate ways of playing, all the voices of people, their energy and interpretations. And that's the place where you finally start playing the way it makes you feel everything you want to feel. Um, it makes you find your own voice, your powerful, unique, different from other people's voice, um, the voice that speaks the truth uh, freely, purely, with no limitations. Now let's see how exactly you can reach that state. When you started learning principles of piano roll system and applying them in a new piece, I told you that in the very last stage you will have to let go and forget all those rules and tasks. With time and repetitions they all went to your subconscious, simply letting you have good, comfortable sensations and hands, fluency of technique and music in your mind. Now you don't have to think about any of those tasks, um, you simply touch keys in a natural, effortless way and focusing completely on your inner world. The whole exercise might take 3-5 days to complete and I would strongly suggest you not to play anything else during that time, not to drag yourself back with old sensations, not to complicate your practicing. What you need to do is you need to play as slow um, as you need to have enough time to feel everything you want to feel in between notes and you need to play only with intonation and remember that it doesn't matter how you know sound even how you keep your hand fingers even how how do you see it what is important and what will help you to reach that world is energy the energy that you feel in between notes while internal singing, not the notes themselves. And I thought that, you know, this internal singing is kind of a tool to discover your whole new world, your whole new sensations. I thought that uh, calling those sensations your honor, your, your, honor, <laughs> your own, your own voice would be the most natural thing. <laughs> So what you need to find is that your voice and everything you speak through it sound more three-dimensional and less flat, more free, confident and pure and less tense, unsure and fearful. Also, you want to avoid any pushing sensations because pushing comes from old patterns and uh, norms of play from other people that were like uh, programmed into your mind over the years of your education. So if you notice this pushing feeling, that's a sign that you are yet to find your own natural um, voice with natural flow. On this stage, you want to completely change the shape of music. Play with different rhythm, different time, different dynamics and articulations. Play odd, play weird with no limitations. That will greatly assist your mind to let go all the old patterns and sensations and it literally switches your mind to new sensations and a good example of such playing you can find in one of my recent uploads called um, contem contemplative versions 
<laughs> so for those of you who were like wondering what is wrong with Amalio, <laughs> what is it all about, now you know what is it all about. try to play faster and you feel that you're kind of losing this feeling and start pushing and suppressing this new state with all sensations I suggest you to come back to slow tempo and stick with it for maybe a couple of more days on the second stage you will find that you can play faster and rhythmically closer to what is written in the score yet fully experiencing all the new sensations while internal singing. So basically you can play faster and still remain your new upgraded voice. And on the last stage you are coming back to all the nuances that are written on the score, you're coming back to all the principles of the system and you will notice that uh, all the principles are still the same, nothing has changed, uh, you use it in the same way, but yet your voice was upgraded. Uh, the voice that you use for intonation for internal singing and as I said already previously you would f simply feel that um, you're speaking with your own voice through internal singing you know what to say through phrasing image form artistry and time and you know how to say through sound imagination and I would suggest you to start with adding sound imagination first harmony dynamics voicing and then next day add everything that belongs to intonation, uh, articulations, musical speech, phrasing, image, form, time and artistry. And that's how you find your own voice that lets you have your confident message, freedom, ease and profound contentment from knowing that you're on the right place in the right moment in your life doing the exact thing that you always knew you could do. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.